Hello everyone, this video is about hematology 2 where we will be discussing abnormalities about the blood cells. The blood cells that we are referring to would be the red blood cells, white blood cells, and the platelets. In this video, we will discuss the platelet abnormalities and disorders. The red blood cell and white blood cell abnormalities would be discussed in two different videos. This video will give an overview about the different platelet abnormalities and some disorders that are correlated with platelets. There are three different morphologic anomalies that are related with platelets. We have giant platelets, platelet clumping, and platelet satellitism. The first of the platelet anomalies is the giant platelet. Giant platelets indicate premature release from the bone marrow due to the increase in the demand in the circulation. They are usually bigger than the red blood cell. As you can see here in the picture, this is a giant platelet as compared to a regular red blood cell and also comparing it to a regular platelet. Giant platelets are usually seen in giant platelet syndromes. The second platelet anomaly is platelet clumping. This is the phenomenon where platelets are seen clumped or grouped together in a peripheral blood smear, as you can see here in the picture. The cause of platelet clumping is not always pathologic. One example of cause for platelet clumping is a slow venipuncture, where platelets tend to clump because of very slow extraction of blood. Another cause may be induced by the anticoagulant EDTA. And it may also be caused if the sample is old or is aged. A sample of more than 24 hours may cause platelet clumping. A pathologic cause for platelet clumping may be Glanzmann's thrombasthenia, which we will discuss a little bit more later on. The third of the platelet anomalies is the platelet thread. This is when platelets have been activated before the preparation of a blood smear. They are characterized by spider-like or thread-like projections. These are the threads. These are actually the fibrin threads that the platelets have formed for coagulation or for clotting. The fourth of the platelet anomalies is platelet satellitosis. This is a phenomenon where the platelets adhere to a white blood cell. They form a ring or they satellite around a white blood cell. In vitro, this is not significant. It has no clinical significance, but it can cause pseudothrombocytopenia as these platelets that have adhered to the white blood cells may no longer be counted in the platelet count. Platelet disorders may be categorized according to the following. They can either be hemorrhagic or thrombotic, or they can be quantitative or qualitative. Let's start with the hemorrhagic platelet disorders. Hemorrhage is defined as severe bleeding that requires physical intervention. It may be localized, general, acquired, or congenital. Localized bleeding or localized hemorrhage is from a single location or from an isolated blood vessel defect. Generalized bleeding is bleeding from multiple sites. It is also spontaneous and recurring, or it is a hemorrhage that requires physical intervention and transfusion. Acquired hemorrhage is developed or secondary to conditions like vitamin K deficiency, liver disease, or kidney failure. Congenital disorders are uncommon, and they lead to repeated hemorrhages following minor injury or lesions. Examples of congenital hemorrhagic platelet disorders are von Willebrand's disease or the different factor deficiencies. Examples of factor deficiencies are factor 1 deficiency, which causes a fibrinogenemia. A deficiency of factor 8 is called hemophilia A. A deficiency of factor 9 is hemophilia B, and a deficiency of factor 11 is called hemophilia C. The second platelet disorder is thrombotic platelet disorder. Thrombosis is a disorder resulting from abnormalities in the blood flow that causes the inappropriate formation of platelets or fibrin clots that obstruct the blood vessels. This is 
a thrombus. One example of thrombotic platelet disorder is disseminated intravascular coagulation, also known as DIC. This is also known as defibrination syndrome or consumption coagulopathy. This is the generalized activation of hemostasis and only happens secondary to systemic diseases. This involves all hemostatic systems. How? What happens is the fibrin microthrombi partially occludes small blood vessels, like this one in the picture, and this consumes the platelets, coagulation factors, and fibrinolytic enzymes. This combination of events sets loose a series of toxic and inflammatory processes. Let's now go to the second type of platelet disorders, which is quantitative. And in quantity, it is either an increase or a decrease in platelet count. Thrombocytosis is an increase in circulating platelets with an abnormally high platelet count of more than 450,000 per microliter. Reactive thrombocytosis is a condition described as an elevation in the platelet count that is only secondary to conditions like inflammation, trauma, or other underlying and seemingly unrelated conditions. Thrombocytopenia is a decrease in platelet counts with platelet count of fewer than 100,000 per microliter. And this is the most common cause of clinically important bleeding. Bleeding disorders resulting from platelet abnormalities, whether quantitative or qualitative, are usually manifested by bleeding into the skin or mucous membranes, or both. Mucocutaneous bleeding is bleeding on both the skin and mucous membranes. The common presenting symptoms include petechiae, purpura, ecchymosis, epistaxis, and gingival bleeding. Reactive thrombocytosis may be due to blood loss and surgery, splenectomy, in iron deficiency anemia, and in stress or exercise. Thrombocytosis may also be due to myeloproliferative disorders like polycythemia, chronic myelogenous leukemia, myelofibrosis with myeloid metaplasia, and essential thrombocythemia. This is a blood film with essential thrombocythemia where there is an increased number of platelets with variation of sizes. This is characteristic of essential thrombocythemia. A decreased number of platelets or thrombocytopenia may be due because of the decrease in the production of platelets. Examples would be bernard sourier syndrome and Wiskott-Aldrich syndrome. In bernard sourier syndrome, platelets are giant or large. While in Wiskott-Aldrich syndrome, platelets tend to be small. Thrombocytopenia may also be due to the increase in the destruction of platelets. Examples would be thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, also known as TTP, and hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS. The last category for platelet disorders is a qualitative disorder. Thrombocytopathy is a term given when there is a change in platelet function. One of the functions of platelet is aggregation. And an example of disorders of platelet aggregation is Glanzmann thrombasthenia, where there is a defect in the surface receptor. This surface receptor is known as the GP2B3A or the glycoprotein 2B3A. Another function of platelet is adhesion. And an example of disorders of platelet adhesion is the bernard sollier syndrome. In the bernard sollier syndrome, there is a defect in the platelet glycoprotein complex, which is GP1 b 59 or the glycoprotein complex 1B59. And the last disorder is a disorder of platelet secretion. An example of disorders of platelet secretion is the storage pool diseases. And there's a lot of these storage pool diseases. An example would be hermansky podlock syndrome, where there is a profound deficiency of the platelet 
dense granule. So again, in Hermansky Pudlak, there is a deficiency in the dense granules of the platelets. And in Hermansky Pudlak syndrome, there is a morphologic characteristic of platelets described as the Swiss cheese platelet as seen in the pictures. And that ends this video, which is an overview of the different platelet abnormalities and disorders. Please watch the other two videos, the red blood cell and the white blood cell abnormality and disorder videos. Thank you for watching.